The future is now. This is the future of synthesizers and pianos and keyboards all in one. And you just said the line that I think is the tagline of everything. You've been waiting to play a piano like this for 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people do this on a piano for my whole life. Let's jump into it. This is Josh from Expressive E, and this is the Osmos. So let's dive right in. What do we have here? This is a gestural synthesizer. So on a normal synthesizer, you have your attack, decay, sustain, release, and that controls how the sound works. In this case, you are the attack, decay, sustain, and release. And I'll just show you, this is how sensitive it is. So if you want to have a very gentle attack, pretty much if you dial the sensitivity up at the touch of a hair. That picking that up, that's pretty wild. But if you want to play it completely differently, you in dip, with different gestures, you're gonna get a totally different sound. This brings feeling to the piano where you don't have a pitch wheel and a right. This is every. This is it. I mean, you this have is, this is expression. As many pitch wheels deal. as you have fingers. <laughs> um, and there's uh, there's the initial pressure. And then there's a second depth of aftertouch, which does sometimes subtle or very extreme things. And of course, the, the thing we haven't said is the thing that everyone talks about, that it wiggles. What's really nice is you can play gentle and aggressive with, you know, different parts of your hand. You have this unbelievable control over dynamics between voices. You can detune or tune however you want. And um, all the sensitivity settings are can be dialed in to your liking. Now, right now I have it at maximum, basically. So if you were to touch it just uh, yeah, I mean, it starts at like nothing. <laughs> um, but you can make that a little easier on yourself. You know, if, if that, I was gradually turning up the sensitivity as I got used to it. And then the vibrato range is completely adjustable. So you can turn it off altogether. If you just want to make sure you're playing in tune and have like a really sensitive bed. Um, you can go from a quarter step, which is pretty much no matter how fast you wiggle, it's going to be subtle. Um, you can have it go up to the full keyboard. Actually beyond 96 steps. Uh, in general, for vibrato, I like to keep it around here, but everyone's preferences are different. It's just so, it's so, jarring to see such a familiar playing surface act so strange like it's what you've always wanted it to be you know there's plenty of like you were saying before like there's lots of mpe products that that you can wiggle and squeeze and shake and do all kinds of weird stuff but nothing that like feels right for like the for like a piano like for like a for you know to really play it to really play it and be able to play like without too much practice, you know, you can pretty quickly dial in, you know, like really elegant, big chords. Um, it's kind of sky's the limit. And it's a really exciting time because the, the new techniques are just being invented as people are getting their hands on this. It's really cool because like to see where Expressive East started with with the touche and like, like that was like the familiar way that we were all working with keyboards before and trying to interact with them in this way. But this is this is that, this is blowing it open. Like this is a whole different deal. So let's take me deeper, take right. me into this thing. Show me what it can do. Let's pick a new sound and I'll show you the macros. One of the things that's so special about this synth is the sound engine. It has the sound engine called the Egan Matrix inside. And it's just, um, it's hard to separate that from the playing experience because the sound engine is mapped 
intricately to every tiny gesture of your hand. So the synthesis itself is, is designed to respond to how you play in a very intuitive way. Um, most people's reaction to this when they first get their hands on it is it feels more like an acoustic instrument than a, than a synth. Um, and to keep the experience like very music friendly and music focused, uh, pretty much everything you would ever want to do in terms of adjusting sounds is in this synth menu and there's these macros you can adjust. Um, like this one as a filter, you can change the modulation of the waveform release, there's two more sets, there's dirt, and delay. I mean, this is like a phenomenally built piece of hardware that has its own synth engine. So it's like a standalone synth and wild, crazy controller, right? Like it's, it, this is, this is pretty substantial. Yeah. Well, if you want to jump, I can show you how it acts as a controller. It's really simple. We just go from sound engine to external. Um, and actually, I'm not going to do it right now. But, all right, so even just as a controller, let's go to MPE mode. I'm going to pull up an MPE synth, and I'm going to, I actually still can output the audio from this. So if you wanted to control a VST synth and the internal engine simultaneously, mm. you could. But let's just turn the volume off for now. So this is, let's get the sensitivity back to where I like it. Right now... The sound you're hearing is coming from a VST, it's the Artoria CS80 V4, and you get the same level. It, it's such a weird feeling. It feels like the sound is happening before I make it. Like if you just lean on it, Auto, the same after touch all this can be tweaked to how you like to play let me switch to another sound so because this is surge xt it's a free synthesizer that has uh, one category of mpe sense and just to show you the same level of sensitivity that's it just <laughs> like i wish you had a <laughs> I wish you had an angle here because it's you're not it's like not even registering anything And then you can get the same elegant, beautiful. It's such so comforting. Like there, there are there are other products out there that when you touch it, like you know, you get that responsiveness, but it feels so foreign. You're lost always in these things because it's usually just one continuous piece of jelly or whatever it is and you're kind of lost in sound this is you know where you're at but you're going to get that 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 depth and that that sensitivity and that articulation like all these things that you don't get out of an acoustic instrument like this is such a different experience it really is the, the tactile feedback you get from it and it has to do with the mechanism is so simple um there's each key is separately removable Beneath each key is, there's a silicone cylinder for the first half of travel and another cylinder for the second half of travel. There's not a single drop of glue in this entire instrument. The whole thing can be taken apart with a screwdriver and each key and its corresponding cylinders can be pulled out individually. So it really is an evergreen product. If 10 years from now you need to replace a key, you should be able to just turn it over, grab a screwdriver, is that what you would do? You would, you would, we would service it in the field. Like if I had one of these and something went bad, like is that how you guys would do it? We like we would we would like it that easy to open it up and just fix it myself. That's awesome. It's That's impossible great. to break. It's so simple. There's no glue. Things happen though. You know what I mean? Like you know, it takes a hit or you need to re adjust the key or something like that. But like you can, it's all field serviceable except if you have to get into the guts of it, right? Yeah. Like the key bed itself is pretty. Easy. Like it's not like I, you don't need to take it like a. A lot of keyboards you have to take somewhere special to like service it and adjust the key bed and the whole thing has to come out. Like each key can be done kind of individually. That's yeah, you, awesome. You order the key, you order the cylinders, whatever you need, and it, you just turn it over and put it in yourself. That's way cool. And that's like probably the least cool pro thing about this. Animal <laughs> but that's, that's cool. That's way cool. It's important because you want to know that the mechanism is going to survive and maintain integrity for, because 10 years from now, 
there's going to be thousands and thousands of internal sounds that you can have access to and thousands of VSTs with MPE capability. You want to know that this thing's going to feel the same as it did, you know, the day you got it. Way cool. And then the vibrato is just two biodegradable material, these guide rails mm. that just give it the tension. It feels great. If it was just a keyboard with aftertouch, it would already have like the, the best keyboard I think I've ever touched. And then like this is a again another Surge XT sound like. I feel like this is also like a funk machine. I feel like it's like the <laughs> ultimate, like you need to be playing like clav on this and be like going like wackadoo on it. Like this is just a crazy, like every funk bass kind of synth thing ever. Like this is a serious machine. It is that you that you can just do things. It's gonna unlock things that guys have wanted to do. Cause now they got two hands. Well, not just two hands. Let me show you something. And they can you got ten fingers. Beyond that. So you, can, you, you can also have all kinds of stuff. So you have there's two pedals under here. Uh, there's a, a expression pedal and a sustain pedal. And you can map them to any feature of the sound engine. Oh, let's get the sound engine back. All right, so here's a string sound. The way a normal sustain pedal works, you, you hit the sustain and then everything you play gets caught by the sustain mm -hmm. pedal. But let's start with just one note. This is, as long as you get the right pedal and this, this uh, can work with many different company's pedals and they get calibrated even with one sustain i have control with the pedal oh cool that's awesome and then here's where it gets amazing to me and and as a film composer this is invaluable so this is not sustain this is sustenuto and there's two of these so with one pedal now i'm gonna So now with one pedal, I have control of this sound. I'm gonna add a second sound. Now with this independent control, and I haven't played anything yet. So I have all this expression with two, just my feet then. That was awesome. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, folks. That was really cool. That was super cool. It's And that's with every single sound. And not just that. I can map both of these pedals with the same sensitivity to any function of the synth engine. So any one of the macros, um, it's, it's really powerful. Like, what you can do with one hand is powerful. What you can do with two hands is powerful. What you can do with everything together is and it seems so like in, like the interface seems super intuitive like it seems super easy to navigate like that's one of the best screens i've probably seen in the game especially on like a hard like on a hardware synth and there's a lot going on under the hood here yeah i mean it's it's so user friendly first of all there's there's over 500 sounds and they really thought about with the sound design how to get something for each different type of end user. So there's, you know, like for producers of this type of music, there's like a whole bank of sounds for producers of this type of music. There's that for film composers, this thing is like a godsend because it's so like in my world, uh, expressive. It's so expressive. Yes. E. Um, <laughs> it's very, <Christ. laughs> but in my world, like expression literally is, 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 is the, like the goal that yeah. we're always looking for having like quick, access to to very sensitive dynamics and things like that and you know in film and tv it's everything and you know I, like instantly i can just dial it up but you know i, I invite r&b musician friends over to my house to, to try it out and and i'm just like oh check out this whole playlist of stuff or some guy who makes edm and then it's just like or they can change the um the pitch bend rate so that it goes crazy um there's also and this is an interesting function because it it is a, a 
little gift from the pandemic because uh, we had a little extra time and they developed this arpeggiator, but it's an MPE arpeggiator, which is, there's nothing like it on earth. So let me- Let's let me go. Move. Okay, so there's several modes, but I'll start with the initial mode. So essentially with an MPE arpeggiator, it does what a normal, what a normal arpeggiator does. All the sensitivity that you would get from one. So let's uh, let's just try something. Now I have the, the sensitivity dialed up to max, which I don't think is for most users, but it does give you this really cool function. Another cool function of just the, the regular first setting of the MPE arpeggiator, which is, so right now it's playing all of these notes, right? But because it's so sensitive, I can add a step that's invisible because it will play so quietly that you don't hear it. So I can just touch. Changes the rhythm. I could let's see if I could try a few. Is this just a default patch in there? No. You, you can do this on any patch. So I just I, I just go to uh, playing right here, and there's one of the two. But the arpeggiator modes. operates that way, like the way you're moving it, the way you're getting like that's how it works. That's the MPE as you dig into hit that changing the rhythms and the way that it's going. Like that's well, that's the one of the there's what, multiple types. Yeah, I'll show you. So. Let me go to another preset that I set up just to show this off in particular. I see what you're saying about the democratization. Like, like there's no knobs on here. There's no you don't have to worry about twisting knobs and levers and pushing things to get to like a sound that or, you know dial that in. Like, you just can go. Like, you just twist a couple knobs. It's right there. It's super easy, and then you're just on it, and you're oh, just yeah. playing it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to worry about reaching over somewhere and adjusting a oscillator or a tempo or anything. Like, you're just on this thing. And you can have, you can save general settings. So if I want to have it sync to the DAW, I can have it sync to the DAW if I want to set my own tempo. Um, here's another sound that I really like, and I put the chords mode of the arpeggiator on, so. more control over it or more of a safety net, you can dial down the sensitivity and make it a lot easier, but. That would be wrong. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love the happy accidents too. Here, I'll go through a couple others. This is, uh, it'll give you an octave on aftertouch. Here, I'll play, I'll play all the same note. All right, I'm gonna break that rule because there's a mode called swingy, which is what it sounds like. It swings. There's a lateral rhythms. So there's just updates coming out and just new sounds and new new. 
functions and stuff like that can just be uploaded and that's just kind of how Expressive is handling it, right? They're just kind of loading in new sounds and stuff like that? Well, right now it comes with uh, over 500 sounds and they're already in there. Um, I think it's gonna take people a couple years to even sort through oh, all sure. that. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. But for sure, there's a lot of sound design in the work and there are, there are sound designers out there making stuff for this. If they want to dive deep into that, they can. But the way I like to put it is it's, it's the equivalent of ripping open the case of your analog synth, busting out a soldering iron and some components and changing the way it's wired. Mm -hmm. um, that is not necessary. Yeah. But what's amazing is that it, it works just as well with any VST that has MPE capability. Yeah. And it's really just how deep is the programming of that VST. And as we all know, like everybody is making MPE capable stuff right now for that exact reason, because expression is everything. And then, you know, for me personally, like if um, the menu is very accessible, you know, so here's all of the macros for the synth. I have to go over one or two knobs, but it gives me lots of options. And then in addition to that, there's an internal effects unit. So this has an analog echo on it. There's a reverb, mod delay, swept echo, analog echo, low pass filter echo, high pass filter echo. So put the analog echo back on. There's an EQ, a compressor and gain. Um, and then there's various settings for, for how you wanna program the, the pitch bend wheel and what you wanna assign that to. Um, also, this is something that I haven't really heard many people talk about it. Let me get the right sound. All right, so there's also a pre-gain and a post-gain. And, and uh, on this Nato control, every single macro receives MIDI CC messages that can be like, this literally took two seconds to program, can be mapped to any, like the, the cheapest MIDI controller you can find can control it. So, so if I want to mess with the sound, all the macros, But what I want to show, yeah, there we go. Let's turn it up a little bit. This is the pre-gain and this is the post-gain. And when you crank the pre-gain into the internal sound engine, it acts as a wave folder and creates saturation, distortion. That is awesome. I'm going to turn the post down so I can crank this. It's another thing that like you don't need the sound like we're not looking at the editor for the sound engine i'm just turning the gain up i'm just twisting knobs it it just it just functions and then if you wanted to use this as your main controller for external there's a bunch of different modes now mpe is what i was using before to interact with mpe since uh, vsts but in classic keyboard mode i just want to show you Just as sensitive as any, and it's really comfortable and easy to play. All right, so pressure glide is a really interesting feature. We've actually been hearing it this whole time. Pressure glide allows you to set an interval, and then anything from that interval or less is going to glide between two notes based on pressure. So you can do it in a very musical way when you set it to a low number. Right now it's on two half steps. So if I want it to glide, I use that a lot because it really, it does things that like if you were sliding a fret, mm -hmm. it does these really musical, natural things. Um, but you can change the interval. Actually, let's do a more interesting sound for that as well. Let's just take a this sound. All right, so right now, pressure glide is set to same interval, right? So let's crank it up to an octave.
So if you're just playing, you, I know that I have to go more than an octave if I want. That's cool. It's like you're setting up your own like little splits anywhere you want along the board as you're playing. And then you can go all the way to full keyboard. So then just like a mono synth, just like. Like a mono synth yeah, on, yeah, on all the drugs. All the drugs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's a very, it, it goes from musical to sound design, like pretty much yeah. instantly. And, and it's the same thing goes like, I could just crank all the macros and turn this sound into a behemoth, you know, like. Let's see, this is a very musical sound with breath, but let's see what we can do. And I'm gonna gently play with the pre. Let's go down. And that was without planning, just taking a very <laughs> gentle wind sound and quickly turning it into like a, an evil alien overlord. Awesome. Yeah, this is, it's it's so cool because it's it's hardware, It's and it's a fantastic, like, this is like a piece of kit, you know, like this is a piece of hardware that's so familiar that's just really crazy under the hood. And that's that's really cool. It's also very elegant and simple. Yeah, designed. like it's 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 so unassuming. And then you touch it and you're like, man, this is wacky. In like the best kind of way. Like this is like the best kind of wacky. Like and and that's the thing. Like this category of product, this MPE lineup, usually they're really wacky. Like way off the other end of wacky, too wacky to be comfortable. This like is play not a it. Bleep loop machine. No, this is this <laughs> is a, an instrument that lets you get weird if you want to. If you want, to, and it's easy, it's quick and accessible, but it also lets you dial in. It's like the first one that's not like oh, it's on, a, it's in a category of its own. Like it's this other. That's a thing that like yeah, you have to you have to be like your own. Just like you're a guitar player or a keyboard player, like you have to play that instrument. You couldn't just be something and jump into one of those things, right? This. You can play. Well, let's do a test. Okay. I don't um, play, but okay, let's go. Well, even better. We're here. Even let's better. Do it. So I, I took two sounds, and, and I'm not exaggerating. It took me about three minutes to, to record this. I literally just did one sound, then a second sound, and made like a little bed track. And let's see if we can't get you to sound like Vangelis for a second. Okay. So let me. Uh, you tell me what to do. I'm here for it. Sound. You can play. I'll give you. I'm gonna start the track. You can do you wanna and play every white note except for a B. Not that. And you're good, yeah. Here I'll put you up here too so you can really uh Yeah, try to play a lead line against this bed track, okay? Okay. So uh not this. Yeah, not that, but you can play whatever other lead you want. It should all sound really good. Be smooth, be expressive. Can't touch it. There's a button. Don't touch it. Yeah. I'm going to touch it. All right, I ready? just touched it, didn't I? All right. Have fun. Be expressive. Sign me up, coach. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Chuck Levin's Washington Music Center. Get your hands on this thing. Even if you're, you don't even have to because you get it already. You already get what this thing is going to do and what it, what it is. But come get your hands on it anyway. Chuck Levin's Washington Music Center. 
the Expressive E Osmos. Josh, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. You. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This has been awesome. Thanks a lot. See you next time.